Now that we've come up with a definition of the derivative as a function, let's, let's do an example. Uh, here we have to find the derivative of g of x equals x squared minus 4x plus 3. So first thing I want you to notice is that this is different than some of the problems we've done before in that I'm not asking you to find the derivative at a point. It's not saying find the derivative of g of x at x equals 2 or x equals 3, right? It's asking you to find the derivative of the function, which means that the answer is going to be another function. Okay, so that's important. The other thing to keep in mind is that this question can be phrased a few different ways. And another way you, I could ask the same question is, find g prime of x if g of x equals x squared minus 4x plus 3. Okay, that's, a, that's another way of asking the exact same question. And I could also just say, um, you know, given g of x equals x squared minus 4x plus 3, find g prime. G prime. No, not putting in the x. Okay, those all mean the same thing. Remember, g prime of x, g prime of x, is just shorthand notation for the derivative of of g of x. Okay, so let's recall that we have a a formula, a formula more more like a definition, I would say, for the derivative, and that is the limit as h goes to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. Okay, so look at the previous video if you haven't already to see that. Now, the fact that we're dealing with a function called g and not f obviously makes no difference. Okay, so ours will just be in terms of g instead of, instead of f. All right, and so now let's actually compute it. So, and by the way, um, I've mentioned this before, but this part of the definition, the one without the limit, is called the difference quotient. Difference quotient. So if I use that term, you'll know what I mean. All right, so let's compute it here. G prime of x. g prime of x is equal to g of x plus h minus g of x divided by h. But of course, I immediately forgot the all-important limit as h goes to 0 in front. All right, so what's this going to equal in our case? And here's where you want to understand a little bit about function um, translations. g of x plus h means wherever I see, I go up to my function g, and wherever I see an x, I put an x plus h. So this is going to become x plus h squared instead of x squared minus 4 times x plus h instead of 4x. Uh, plus 3. So let me just color code a little bit. That, underlined in red, is g of x plus h. Okay, and so now I'm going to subtract g of x, which is x squared minus 4x plus 3. So you got to be really careful here. You got to put that in parentheses x squared minus 4x plus 3 divided by h. Okay, and this, again, g of x in blue is just this here. And here's what my goal is. And now I've just, at this point, it's just an algebra problem. I need that h in the bottom here to go away, because when you're given a limit, the first thing you want to try is substitution. And if I substitute in, I'll be dividing by zero. That does not mean it doesn't exist. It means I need to do more work. So the goal is to get that h to cancel. And the good news is that that will always happen in this, in this definition for 
problems like the one that I've given you. That will always happen. Like quadratic like this, the H is guaranteed to cancel as long as you simplify the top correctly. So let's make sure we slow down and focus on doing that. So the first thing you got to realize is that we need to expand x plus h squared out. So this is what I mean by it being a little bit more algebra than anything else. So depending on how you do that, I guess I'll just, to be thorough, do it out here to the side. You know, an x plus h gives you x plus h squared would give you x squared, xh, xh, and an h squared. So that's x squared plus 2xh's plus an h squared. So this is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. I'm going to distribute this negative 4 to the x and the h to give me negative 4x minus 4h plus 3. And then I'm going to distribute this negative to those three pieces. So it becomes a negative x squared plus 4x minus 3 all this divided by h. So that h is going to go away, I promise. Let's take a look at a few things that happen that are convenient. One is that x squared here cancels that minus x squared. That's no accident. That negative 4x cancels with that plus 4x. That's also no accident. That plus 3 cancels with that minus 3, and that's no accident. And so what you'll see that's left, and this is no accident, is that you have a 2xh, a plus h squared, and a minus 4h. All of those have h's in them which means that h can be factored out and will cancel with that denominator. And that will always happen in problems like, like this one. So I've got 2xh plus h squared minus 4h divided by h. And again, the h in the top can factor out. leave me with this and finally we get to divide that and that means I can finally substitute in my 0 in for my h here and so that just gives me 2x minus 4 so we can say that g prime of x is equal to 2x minus 4. The derivative of g is 2x minus 4. Now the reason this is very very convenient is because this is a function that will tell me the slope of the tangent line or the slope of the curve g of x at any x value I choose. So for instance if I want to know the slope of the curve at x equals 10, the slope of the curve at x equals 10, slope of tangent line or slope of curve at x equals 10 is just g prime of 10 which equals 2 times 10 minus 4 so that's 20 minus 4 is 16 so the slope of the, t the curve is 16 that's much more powerful this function is much more powerful than that other definition which uh, for which we were finding the derivative at a particular point so I just wanted to emphasize its power uh, in the next video, I'm going to give you more of a visual understanding of this exact example. But just keep in mind that using this definition, this definition, the out the outcome is a function. So it's a, it's an often uh, it's a often more more it's more oftenly used than the uh, than the other one.